So welcome to the August 2018 live Q&A call for AEEG Coach. Um, I chose the topic of documentation, but I'm happy to chat about anything you'd like. So any burning questions straight out of the gates? Anything, anything? If there's no questions, we'll talk about this and maybe there'll be lots of questions because I feel like this is kind of a hot topic and I don't know that we've talked about it before. So anyways, okay, cool. Well, I, of course, as always, just unmute yourself or type in if you have any questions and um, we'll just roll through these quick slides. Um, so if you haven't met me before, I'm Kathy Randall. I'm the creator of AEG Coach um, and the president and CEO of Synapse Care Solutions, where we provide lots of education on a variety of brain monitoring, brain cooling, and all of that stuff. So these are on YouTube now. So people oftentimes watch them that I've never met before, which is kind of fun. You know, um, anyway, so today we're going to talk about documentation because I feel like this is a big, big problem that we oftentimes encounter. So when we talk about using AEG in our NICU, it does take a village and there are many roles that we have to define and equipment and things that we need to add to our practice that weren't there before. So when we talk about program roles, we start with what are, what equipment are we going to use? Who will we monitor? When will we monitor this protocol development? There's all this stuff about sensors, which we've talked about in other, other times and places and then documentation and then parent education. So these are all the things that I usually help places work on when I go there to, to help them with getting AEG going. So for today, I thought what would be kind of fun is just to focus on the documentation. And I think documentation has to kind of, we have to take a step back um, before we even talk about documentation to talk about review and interpretation. So if you've not looked at the device and you've not interpreted the AEG, there's actually nothing to document. So I think we do need to in our protocols, in our units, we have to decide what our standard is. We have to decide who will look at the tracings. So is that nursing? Is that neonatology, nurse practitioners? Is it neurology? You know, is it who is looking at these tracings and how often? That is number one. Then number two is who will interpret the tracings? So to review and to just document the actual, um, hey, Dr. Teji, how are you? Um, if to just look at them is not enough, but we have to actually interpret them and to figure out what is, what is actually um, going, going on with that. So um, how does it fit into our baby's care? How does it actually, um, what does it mean for our baby? So I feel like that's, um, you know, one of the things that we have to consider. So if we don't have that protocol down and we haven't divided it up between just the bedside review and interpretation, those to me are two separate, separate things. Um, so who will document? Then we need to figure that out, right? And I love this picture of like everybody pointing every direction, right? Who will document and how often? So is it the nurse? Is it the provider? Is it neurology? Who? Who will document? And then how often should that documentation occur? And again, there is absolutely no standards. There are no standards around this, around AEEG specifically. Um, so it's a little bit loosey-goosey. We kind of just do, um, we do whatever is in our protocols. Um, and sometimes there's actually nothing even mentioned in our protocols about documentation. Third thing to consider is where will you document? Is it just going to be a bedside paper flow sheet where you're just doing QI and just helping people learn how to use the devices? Will it be actually on the device and then stored as part of the record inside the monitor? Will it be in the actual patient record? Will it be part of your vital signs? Will it be a progress note? Will it be narrative? Will it have drop downs? I mean, all of these things are just decisions that are not universal and are very unique to wherever you work. And that makes it really challenging. Um, so what will you actually document? So what to document? I just recommend using my seven steps um, system because I feel like it's a very systematic way so that you can be consistent. And so the seven steps, if, if probably you've all memorized these by now because you've come to lots of my um, videos or my lectures. So you're going to, want to talk about why are you monitoring? What's the baby's story? Confirm there's good impedance and document that. So the signal quality. 
the strength, assess the background activity. I recommend doing that as the biparietal, the P3, P4 look. That's the kind of universal, um, do that. Then you wanna talk about the presence of sleep-wake cycling, whether or not they're interrupted, whether or not they're mature, whether or not you've seen, you see any areas of suspicion, um, confirming whether it's seizures or artifacts. Then you wanna to look to your two-channel mode, see if there's symmetry between the right and the left, and then stability, meaning that you just compare your tracing to some other period in time. So whether that's an hour ago, four hours ago, yesterday, it doesn't really matter, or a week ago if it's maybe a baby who is being cooled. Um, so if you include these seven areas in your notes, these, this will keep you, I feel like give you a very comprehensive um, view of that. And so documentation is all about being complete too. We don't wanna just partially um, document things. So at the bedside, I think most important is to know your device options. So if you know your device, you'll know what on-screen options you have. I would say most, devices I see, and I think I can almost say all devices I see, have no interaction with the electronic medical record in a very systematic way. So if a nurse or a bedside provider is documenting on these devices, this is double work for them. So if they're going to do this documentation, please, please, please review this documentation for them because it, it can give you some insight into what was actually happening especially if your device does not have a video camera. If your device does not have video, then you, you have to rely on these nurses' notes um, at the bedside. Um, so, but you have to know what your device options are so that you can then figure out the workflow that makes the most sense. It doesn't make sense to um, have them use a pick list of some common things. You know, some of the big devices, like the one in the middle, have pu um, push buttons. So when do they use the push button? Define those times so that the push button is for specific things. Usually where I practice, we use it for um, seizure, clinical seizures only. We use it for that push button. Some places use it for that, or they might do it as a med, a bolus. So like if they're going to treat status or something, they use it for that. Um, so you have to know your device to know what your options are. So on the device, I think it's helpful if you create some sort of high priority events, because again, this is duplication work. Um, that quick pick, being able to quickly just touch and tap um, is really nice. And um, as the provider or the person interpreting the AEG, use these event markings. Be sure it's part of your routine that you're looking through those so that you're um, seeing what was going on. So some essential things I think to mark are medications. Um, anytime we just mentioned like clinical, um, actual clinical seizures, um, hands-on care because that moving, that repositioning, um, sensor reapplication, all that really provides a lot of artifact um, to the, the, the um, tracing. And of course, changes in ventilation is very helpful, but this is very challenging to, um, to be able to get that in there because the baby's usually so critical that something else is more important. But many of the devices do have the ability to go back and put event markers in retrospectively. Um, so you can do that as well and then annotate using a keyboard or an, a touch screen um, online. Um, I say medications only because, um, you know, we've all seen traces like this where the tracing was going along quite nicely and then all of a sudden, splat. Um, and so we can't explain whether or not it's a disconnection or a medication. Um, so I love, I love using event markings so that we're sure that we know what's happening um, right, right at the time. So what are some of my tips? Number one is be consistent. And I think that's that using those seven steps, right? So using these in a very systematic way, make sure that you're complete and that it can be consistent from provider to provider. Second is use standardized language. So when you're just, if you are actually writing continuous normal voltage, then you want to be sure you're referencing these types of um, um, literature references that, that supports what that means. So if you say continuous normal voltage, if you say as defined by Hellstrom Westis 2006, then we will know exactly what you mean by that. We will know that that means upper margins greater than five, or upper margins greater than 10, lower margins greater than five. If you just say continuous normal voltage, we can presume that's what you meant, but we don't know for sure. So I think it's nice to use standardized languages and definitions. Um, and 
and I guess we can infer that, right? We infer continuous normal voltage means that, but maybe someone's made a mistake. So um, I think defining that is, is helpful. Um, and continuous normal voltage, maybe you use the definitions of high, high discontinuous or low discontinuous. So those are also words that are used, you know, in other parts of the literature. So uh, I think using consistent definitions and wording is helpful. I think using the actual voltage descriptions are the, are the best because that, that is actually, um, you know, creates lack of ambiguity that way. Number three, um, automate documented values from the nursing notes. So if you have a way to, um, to do that, then um, you, can actually, you can actually pull that in and save time. So being able to automate those values coming straight in from the nursing notes, um, if your nurses are documenting voltages, then that's really a, a time saver. This is a big question, to include a snapshot or not. Some places do, some places don't. I would say most places don't. Most places don't, um, but you can. You can put it in through the media area in your documentation. You can print it out. You can take a picture, a snapshot, turn it into JPEG, print it out, scan it in. Um, there are lots of options. I would say most people don't. Oh, center, why is standardized date language there twice? Um, I don't know why that's there, but we'll just keep going. And what I was going to show next is basically some examples of how you can put it into the patient records. And um, these were shared. Um, with me by some different sites. Um, so you can have things like this where that have triggers. So, you know, the nurse may trigger on AEEG yes, and then they can talk about what kind they're in use. Oops, sorry. And then they can start to look at the impedance levels and they can document the impedance levels, right? So you're assessing that. And then they can assess the margins and just document the actual value. So like documenting heart rate, you know, 123, you can document upper margin three to five, 11 to 25, greater than 25. So they can just document the exact voltages, just like a vital sign. Um, they can make an assessment on the sleep-wake cyclings if you, if you so choose to train nurses to do that, which I think they're quite capable. Um, so whether or not you define that as mature is a cycle every hour, immature is less than every hour absent is no visible cycling at all. So, you know, having some clear definitions so that people can be consistent um, again. So um, using these pick lists and things make it, make, it quite, make it quite helpful. So that was really all that I had prepared on documentation, but let me go back to wherever this list is. I don't know why there's <laughs> two of those, but these are some of the things I think that are most important. So being consistent, using a common language, automation, um, and then creating your standards. What's, what's right for you guys in your unit? So any questions or comments about this, challenges to documentation? Yes, uh, Kathy, wonderful presentation. This is Dr. Teji. Thanks. Um, hi. hi. Uh, to see you. Yeah, uh, my question is, uh, you know, a couple of questions. Are there any E electronic medical records that are connected with the download of the uh, AEG? No, none that I've seen that are done nicely. Um, there are some ways to, depending on the device you have, some of them may have network archiving and whether mm -hmm. or not that network archiving can then be linked to your patient records, sure. um, huh. that, that seems feasible. Um, I think that most places have just not invested in the amount of IT support necessary to make that realistic. All of them, right. have, all of them have HL7 output. I uh -huh. just don't know that there is really any um, integration to the EMRs. Yeah, that would be, you know, uh, really uh, forward thinking because uh, they are trying to design uh, like a mainframe that would have all the devices connected to the baby yeah. on one screen so that you can basically that's what we do anyway mentally yeah. but that would have be helpful and my yeah. second question is um that when we can this be done on the dock on the uh, machine itself like finding uh you know several minutes or hours and try to calculate it on the device itself, the AEG, what is the upper level average rather than uh, 
uh, or lower level average, uh, lower margin average, mm -hmm. uh, you know, on the on the you know device itself, rather than uh, doing it visually, which can be subjective. Yeah, yeah. So some of the devices do give numeric values, and you can mm -hmm. select. Um, it's more just a function of the device, and the more. Mm -hmm complicated the device, obviously, the more automation happens. Um, there are some devices um, that I know are in, available in Europe that do this that we don't have here in the States um, mm -hmm. that have things like automated background classification, percentage, um, it calculates the percentage of time that it stays in these different rates. So 75% continuous normal voltage, 10% discontinuous, 10% low or something. Um, you know, so it gives a little pie chart in real time of the tracing sure. and the percentage. I think it's the whole tracing, the one I've seen. Um, mm -hmm. Some of the, um, so like the Moberg device, so the CNS device itself, um, it actually does the multimodal. So if I scroll back, I'll show you multimodal, this one. So the multimodal is basically what you just said. You're bringing the EEG, AEEG, to bringing the, the bedside monitoring, other, other options, and you pipe them all together into this, and it's a display. It does yep. trending, yep. it does that. It doesn't interface with the EMR. Oh. So it's standalone, but it does do the integrations. So how about so, FKG and a regular monitor can be input into this? Mm -hmm. Good. And all streamed side by side. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. And who makes this? So that one is the Moberg, Moberg C N S. Okay. Yes, okay. a component neuro monitor or com com component neuro monitoring system C N S. Okay, so it incorporates integrates all the devices connected to the baby. Yes, except cooling uh, blanket, NIRS, physiologic, and EEG AEG. And, and ventilator, then, ventilator settings. It does have some vent settings. Yeah. It depends on it. It has a list of its components that are available that they've uh, interfaced with. But yeah, it wow. has. And That's for, very it's good. used a lot in adult ICUs mm -hmm. where it has um, many, many more devices that we don't even use in the NICU. Excellent. Uh, you know, pupilometers and all sorts of crazy things. Sure, sure. Yeah, how much does it cost? Oh, gosh. You know, those are all contract things. I don't know. Okay. Uh, final question. Uh, can I get a copy of your slideshow, please? Sure. Excellent. Very good. Thank it. you. We Very can... informative. Oh, good. Well, I was hoping You're... that it would, you know, stimulate some at least co conversation because it's definitely this a situation we don't have any standardization between these at all. Um, mm -hmm. But I know people ask me a lot. But the integration is important. All of these devices can interface and archive directly on the network. But whether or not anyone's really doing that to its fullest capacities, I, I don't see that. There's a, a person in Ontario, Institute of Technology. Her name is Nancy McGregor. McGregor and then mm -hmm. there's Etiometry. Uh, and then a couple of more. They're integrating all the devices and their results onto one screen. And mm -hmm. also having blood gases and every device connected to the baby. Because ultimately, we do use information from everything to make yes. a good, sound clinical decision making. So yes. this just works out. And it also shows a relationship of different parameters with each yes. other which we've never done before. Yes, no, it's, I say, you know, we start with just looking at the baby that's kind of one dimensional. We can start adding vital sign monitors as almost two dimensional, brain monitoring three dimensional. But sure. once you have more, you have four and five dimensions together. It gives you a much more rounded um, observation and you know I think NIRS is great but not in the not without the context of blood pressure and heart rate saturation Absolutely. systemically Absolutely. so you know it's nice to watch a trend maybe on the device but when you've got NIRS combined with blood pressure or combined with saturation right together trended it makes it so much more elegant and, and it right. begins to make much more sense very good. Thank you very much. I mean, uh, yeah. that is for the of future. Course. And uh, we need to yes. look at those uh, because we mentally do use we that. We mentally do it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And, or you're like looking and then up and, and 
trying to, and the nice thing about time syncing it on one screen, because yeah, you could have them all together at the bedside, but, and scroll them, but being able to have them time synced is really valuable. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. If you go to their website, I sometimes have done some webinars for them, um, for mm -hmm. Oberg, and then we also, I help sometimes with their monthly just user training, because I've used it in several different centers. So mm -hmm. I, I'm a big advocate of it in NICU's. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's for the future. That's what we need to do. Yeah. Well, we can talk more freely. It's nice to sure. do these, these kind of, um, you know, these kind of short presentations because there's no CEUs involved. So we can talk about brands and products and things that we can't normally do. So. Okay. No, this uh, is for the future and very much needed because yeah. as time goes on, we want, uh, you know, if you want precision uh, medicine, this is part of that. Yes. Yes. Very, very much so. Um, so what are you guys doing in your NICU for your AEG? Are your nurses documenting in the record any of the values that are observed? No, just uh, they will uh, not do it in an organized fashion. But I think you have given a little uh, template for that, which we will begin to use. And uh, in one of the clinic, uh, perinatal clinics, a uh, very old one, they have given like a one page documentation uh, tips, yes. but this is more organized and short and uh, concise. Yeah, I mean, you can you can literally take the seven steps and write write it up in two or three mm -hmm. sentences, right? You can say right. forty weaker with HIE undergoing cooling, good impedance, all less than ten kilo ohms. Background pattern is continuous normal voltage. You know, I see yep. sleep wake cycling, no seizures, symmetrical right and left, and it's been this way for twenty four hours. I mean, that's literally just a couple sentences and you say everything that's in the seven steps. No, it's, it's very good. I mean, you can do a dot phrase. Some people develop a dot phrase to automate so that they can have these seven steps and then they can fill them in. Um, so those are all things that, you know, if you have these shortcuts in your computers, it's really nice to use those. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Always good to see you. Always uh, good to listen to you. Very nice, very concise. Thank uh, you. I learned something. Just walked in uh, from uh, coming from work and post call, and I said, "Hey, this sounds looks good." <laughs> Great. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Anybody else? Any questions? If not, we'll call it a month. Right, go ahead. If, did I hear somebody? I'll put the date for next month back up here. No? Well, Thank that's our that's our 30 minutes and we'll um we'll call it a month unless anybody else has anything. No, thank you very much. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Thank you all for joining. See you next time. See you. Bye.